the way things work. Now, what I always thought is that what happened at the beginning of this curve and what happened at the end of the curve was the same process, completely wrong. There are actually three phases in here. There's an initial phase, which drops very, very quickly, and you'll see some numbers how fast it drops. There's an intermediate phase where it takes a little longer for it to dry down. And then finally, for all of you, including me, who made dry hay, this is where you keep fussing around with out in the field, trying to get it dry enough so that you can get it baled without burning the barn down or having it mold on. Now, there's an idea that, okay, moisture goes out through the leaves. Well, first of all, there is a waxy layer on the leaves, and that keeps the moisture in the plant. What is in the leaves are holes, just like your nostrils, called stomata. And just like your nose, you breathe in uh, oxygen, you breathe out carbon dioxide. And what happens here is, in spite of what some people like to claim, CO2 is critical for plant growth. They breathe in CO2, they combine it with water and uh, sunlight, and they form sugars and starches and release oxygen. And those cells inside of those stomata do not have a waxy layer, so they're using two levels of water. First, evaporation, and the second part is photosynthesis, converting water to sugar and starch, which moves very quickly. Now, when those cells start to run out of moisture, they pull moisture from other cells in the leaf, which pulls moisture from the petiole, which pulls moisture from the stem, which pulls moisture from the roots, which creates a vapor deficit in the roots and pulls moisture out of the soil. A very simple process. As long as the plant is in the sunshine and photosynthesizing. Uh, this is a picture of some plants that my daughter took. It was a white flower and she put it in red dye and in blue dye. And you can see in about an hour, the white flower turned red, the blue one turned blue. This is the same thing that happens in the plants when you mow them. As they're photosynthesizing, they're pulling moisture through the plant. So in our initial phase, the moisture is going out of the leaves. It's pulling moisture out of the stem, but if the stem is no longer attached to the roots, so it can't pull moisture out. So what does it pull in? Air. And so the plant dries from the bottom of the stem to the top. The last thing to dry in this early dry down phase are the leaves. They will be green and soft. They will not be like corn flakes. 35% of the stem moisture goes out through the leaf. Legumes have 10 times more stomata than grasses. I have mowed alfalfa grass mixes, and the alfalfa was ready to ensile before the grasses. Anybody who does bale hay says it's usually the other way around. Because when you're ready to bale, uh, the legumes are still a little damp yet. But for this early dry down phase, legumes have more stomata and will dry faster than grass, as long as they are in the sunshine. You put them in the shade, the stomata close, the whole gig shuts down, and now you're just sitting there. Okay, here is our plant. We have the leaf. And it's photosynthesizing, it's pulling moisture out of the leaf, which pulls moisture out of the petiole, which pulls moisture out of the stem. Uh, wait a minute, what happened here? We got a bend in the stem. Did you ever take a copper pipe and kink it? How much water goes through? Not an awful lot. The same thing happened on this stem. We ran it through a conditioner. And for your early dry down phase, a conditioner is counterproductive to drying the plant because you are limiting how far it can pull the moisture. If you have that full stem, it will pull moisture the full length of the stem. If you bend that stem somewhere in between, you've just interrupted the capillary flow and it will not pull from the bottom. Yes. Uh, early dry down to define the early dry down phase, the early dry down phase is when you first mow it and down to around 60% moisture. Now it's not a clip. It doesn't just go blink like turning off the light. The stomata gradually starts shutting down as it gets below 60. We've run it down to as far as 55 with this rapid dry down phase. 
but most of it starts to slow up at around 60% moisture, which is well within the realm for making silage. So that's the early dry down phase. And here is your, the same, that question in a, in a graphic. And if you look here, once we hit 60% moisture or less than that, the stomata start shutting down. They're not pulling moisture out of the stem anymore. The only way you're going to get that stem dry is to break that stem so that moisture then can exit through the side of the stem, through the parts that were crimped. That's what you need for dry hay. If you're doing all silage, there is absolutely no need to have a conditioner. And if you're doing just dry hay on third or fourth cutting, there is no need to have a conditioner because the stems are so small, a conditioner is ineffective. If you're doing dry hay on first cutting, 80% of the time, conditioning is going to help to dry it down. If you're doing dry hay on second cutting, 50% of the time, intermeshing roll conditioning is going to accelerate the dry down. If you're only doing it on third and fourth, there's no need to spend twice as much money for a conditioner that you have to haul around the field, keep greased and working, and add fuel to operate when, in fact, it is not needed. It's not doing you any good. And if you're doing all silage, it is not needed. Uh, the question is, do you go out with a sickle bar mower and mow it? If you wait for another flag slide, you will see the answer. So you have to stay awake for that. Okay, that was the biology of drying. Now we're going to look at the physics. <laughs> the most important factor for drying is the amount of sunlight hitting that swap, that orange graph at the bottom. The more sunlight hitting the swath, the more the drying process is going to move. Now